Hello everyone, this is Mrs Taylor and today I'm going to be talking to you about Blood Brothers and one of the main themes in Blood Brothers which is class. Okay, so we've got two clear classes in Blood Brothers. We've got the working class, that is Mickey, Mrs Johnston and Linda and Sammy. And then we've got the middle class, that is Mrs Lyons, Mr Lyons and Edward. Okay, so what are the differences between these two? Working class. Working class are most commonly people that work in um, factories or coal mines. Remember at the time, this is what we're talking about. People that don't earn massive amounts of money, so they may not own their own house, they may not own their own car, they um, may not go on holidays. Okay, so yet they've got a job, but it won't be a very high paying job. Whereas the middle classes at this time, they would have been um, employers, so they would have employed people, they would have owned their own businesses possibly, or had very well-paying jobs. We can see a big difference in the working class and the middle class here because we've got Mrs Johnston, who hasn't got a job at the very start, she hasn't got a husband, she lives in a very overcrowded house with lots of children, and she really struggles to pay for things. She can't pay for the milk, for example. At the very, very beginning, we see she's arguing with the milkman because she can't afford to pay for it, and she's begging him, saying, please, I've got a baby, I need this milk, but she sees no way to pay for it. But then we get a little bit of respite because she gets a job with Mrs Lyons. She cleans their house, she's their cleaner. Just a tiny job, but something that she can use to pay for all the children she's got, pay for the milk and pay for some of the debts, which is really nice. And we can obviously see the difference there between the middle class and the working class because Mr and Mrs Lyons are able to employ someone to clean their house, Whereas Mrs Lyons hasn't even got a job. She doesn't need a job because her husband earns so much money. She's able to stay at home and get someone else to clean for her and shop for her. Okay, and those are the big differences between the two characters. And that's where they get to know each other, isn't it? And we've got this irony of the fact that Mrs Lyons bought this massive house for all of her children and she can't have any. And Mrs Johnson can't stop having children. They talk about that. So when they do meet and when they kind of discover that Mrs Johnston can't stop having children and Mrs Lyons can't have them, Mrs Lyons sees this opportunity to have a baby. She sees the opportunity to take one of the twins from Mrs Johnston and have them, well, have it for herself. And as we said before, she kind of exploits this idea because Mrs Johnston is very vulnerable. She's in a very vulnerable place. She's got no one. She's just on her own with her children. She's kind of uneducated, she's, well, pretty uneducated really. She probably left school, didn't have many qualifications, she just got married, had children and that's her life now. She wouldn't have expected to be on her own but she is and now she's struggling. And Mrs John, Mrs Lyon, sorry, has kind of given her this way out. She said, well, I'll have one of your children, you can still work here, everything will be fine, you'll see him every single day. But obviously we know that doesn't happen. So, as it goes on, we have, the twins are born, aren't they? Edward goes to Mrs Lyons and Mrs Johnston keeps Mickey. Uh, we all know what happens, they move away, they don't see each other and then they meet up again when they're seven, nearly eight. So, we, this is where we start to see the real differences between Mickey and Edward and what the class divide does to a child and how it changes them. So we've got Mickey, he plays on the street a lot, he's got an older brother, he swears, he uses colloquial language, he's got an accent, he uses slang... Whereas Edward doesn't generally play on the street. He's playing out kind of, you know, near his home and he sees Mickey and they start talking. He's very naive. The first, one of the first things that uh, Mickey asks Edward is for a sweet. And then Edward's like, yes, of course, here you go. And he gives him the whole bag. Okay, and that shows us how naive Edward is. So we've got Mickey, who's a working class boy, a little bit more streetwise. And we've got Edward that isn't because he's more protected in it in his little bubble, in his home, with his mum and his dad. We have that example of when um, Mickey swears in front of Edward and Edward doesn't have a clue what he's saying, does he? And he's like, what, what is this word? I don't know how to use it. And so Edward says, oh, OK, lovely, I'll go, and, I'll go and look it up in the dictionary. And Mickey doesn't know what a dictionary is. OK, so straight away we've got a big difference there, a big divide. OK, and it's dividing education. Mickey 
doesn't know where a dictionary is, so we know that the onus isn't on him to get an education. His mom doesn't encourage him that much to get an education. She probably, you know, she wants him to go to school, but it's not a massive thing in his life. Whereas Edward, his mom and dad encourage him to go to school. They read to him, they play with him, and he's got much more opportunity to learn and is much more encouraged than Mickey is. Look at the language that's used, okay? We've got Edward that used very formal language and then we've got Mickey that uses his slang and uses swear words and is very, and he, well, he's a lot more colloquial, okay, as we've seen. And I'll put the quotes for the dictionary and I'll put some quotes about uh, the sweets on this slide for you so you can see them as we're talking. Then, as they get older, obviously, you know, that the story tracks their lives, we get to when they're in secondary school and there's two teachers, the teacher of Edward and the teacher of Mickey. And as you see in the play, these are both played by the narrator. Okay, so we get the scene with Mickey and his, his teacher and then we get the scene with Edward and his teacher. And it's played by the same person, it's played by the narrator, so we can see the clear differences in the way that Mickey and Edward are treated by their teachers. Mickey is in a classroom with his teacher who doesn't seem to really care, gets really annoyed with them all, and when he shouts at them, he talks about them not being able to get a job. He says to Mickey, how do you ever expect to get a job? And Mickey doesn't seem to care. Mickey doesn't see the point in education. And we see that the teacher gets very angry and very annoyed with them. And he just, he doesn't seem to care for them at all. He thinks they're going to get some rubbish job and that's the end of their life. Whereas when we see the scene with Edward and his teacher, the teacher again gets annoyed with Edward, but some of the words he uses are very, very different. He talks about Edward going to university. He talks about him going to Oxbridge, the two best universities in the country. So we know that the expectations for Edward are much higher than they are for Mickey. And that is because of the divide in their class. Because Edward is middle class. He's expected to go to university. He's at a boarding school. Whereas Mickey is at a normal state school. And he's expected to just leave school, get a job and get on with it. Okay, and that's a really nice scene to look at to see the key differences in their education. So again, I'll put a couple of quotes on this slide for you that show the difference in that. As they get older, we see how the class divide really separates their opportunities and how they end up. We see that Mickey leaves school straight away, gets a job, really quite happy with it, and that's all well and good. Edward comes back from Chris, for, sorry for Christmas from university and Mickey's like, right, it's all on me, I'm going to get a job, I'll do this, I'll do that. And Edward's really happy with that. But then when Edward comes back again, we see that something has changed. There's been a, a big economic downturn and we've got Mickey out of a job and we've got Edward still at university. So when Edward comes back and Mickey's out of a job, he doesn't quite understand the situation because Edward is this middle class young man. He's got a good family. He's got a family that will give him money if he needs it. He doesn't understand how hard it is for Mickey. And Mickey starts to get depressed. Mickey is in this place where he can't get a job. He's depressed. He's unhappy. He hasn't got any money. He feels like his life is going nowhere. Whereas Edward's life has just started. It's getting better. He's going to university. He's going to get a really good job. Okay, And that is where we see the differences in the two. And the tension starts to mount. We see that Mickey gets angry with Edward. He starts to resent his life. He's saying that you don't understand things. You know, you, he, he feels like he's in the real world. And to, it, and to Mickey, he isn't. He's in a totally different world. We've got Mickey struggling, trying to get a really, any, any kind of job. He'd want anything. And we've got Edward that's just started his life at university and we know he's going to get a really good job after that. So as it goes on and on and on, we see that Mickey gets more and more depressed. Then he gets involved in crime because he sees no other option and with Sammy. And obviously he goes to prison. Whereas Edward is at university, he's doing well at university, he leaves and he gets a really good job. He gets a job as a counsellor, so he's got an influential job. And then we've got Mickey that just goes down. So we've got a real difference, and it's their difference in the opportunities they've had and where they've got to. So because Edward was, sorry, because Mickey was middle class, he was always going to just get a job, leave school, earn a little bit of money, get married and have children. Whereas Edward, that was never his plan. His parents were never going to let him do that. They were going to let him go to university. They were going to make sure he had a good job. Okay, and so he will always have money, he will always have a good position, and his life will be a lot easier than Mickey's. 
so basically, what Russell is trying to say to us is that the class divide shows... Well, the class divide is... It shows the different opportunities that people get and how unfair it is that although Mickey and Edward are basically the same person, because they were born into different classes, they have had completely different lives. They haven't had the opportunities that... They should have. They haven't had equal opportunities. Mickey has had this opportunity that, well, he's had a very, he's had a big lack of opportunity. He hasn't been able to go to university. He's had to leave school and get a job. Whereas Edward has been able to go to university and do really well. Right, guys, I'm going to leave it there because Mr. Riley and Miss Garcia are at the window pulling faces at me. But I'll put lots of quotes on the slide for you, and I hope that helps. See you soon.